Happy greetings, everyone. My name is Crystal Foreman. I'm the chef and owner of Holistic Wellness and Health, where we make healthy living easy, nutritious, delicious, and fun, with a focus on plant-based foods to help you live a healthier and more vibrant life. Today, we are making butternut squash soup, roasted butternut squash, and roasted cauliflower. Um, pretty much all of the produce we're using today came out of the box, the produce box that we received from the Plantation Park Heights Urban Garden in West Baltimore City. So we are going to go and get started with our butternut squash soup. So for those who are not familiar, this is the butternut squash. This one is actually from Moon Valley Farms CSA box, but we we're using two butternut squashes today. So the other one is from our box from Plantation Park Heights. And then we also have the cauliflower. This is what it looks like. This off the head, it still has the green parts left on here. So that's our roasted cauliflower. And these are our ingredients for our butternut squash soup. So you can just um, zoom in. So we'll be using um, diced onions, carrots, celery. So I'll that. And apples. Then we're setting apples. And apples as well. And, um, and this is the other butternut squash we're using. So you can see that they come in different shapes and sizes. Um, some of them look a little more um, cylindrical than others, but all of the seeds are usually in this bottom part. So when you cut it, like when I cut this top part off, it shouldn't be um, any seeds here. Same thing with this. So let's get started. We're gonna use this one. This is a funny shape object, or um, technically fruit here. You wanna make sure, like this one actually has a nice flat base. You want to be careful when cutting anything like this because it can roll. When you're using your knife, you don't want it to slip and cause any accidents. Definitely want to use a nice, good, sharp knife for um, something like this. I'm going to go in and cut the base off anyway, mm -hmm. just so I have a super, I know my surface is good. So you can kind of see some of the seeds down here. You can actually roast these if you want. Actually, because this is a long one, I'm going to cut here. And I'm going to cut off my edges. So we have, this is our base, our top part here. I'm going to keep it nice and flat. The way to have it flat like this, you can slice through the center versus trying to do this and mm. it's rolling all over the place. Oh, Leia Soul says hi. Hi, Leia. So we're going to go and put right on through. Oh, so everyone had a happy holiday. Beautiful seeds here. So we're gonna scoop all of that out and put it in. So you can rinse these seeds and roast them just like you would pumpkin seeds. Kayvon Sanders says happy holidays. Happy holidays, and Kayvon. So if you want to roast these seeds, how do you go about roasting them? Um, 425 degrees um, Fahrenheit in um, a shallow roasting pan. You put some oil, salt, and pepper. Or if you want to go for sweet seeds, you can use cinnamon and sugar mm. um, and salt as well. And I usually use um, grapeseed oil or um, coconut oil is cool too, melted mm. coconut oil. Mm. And if you're going for a sweeter version, um, toss it all together, put it on your pan, spread it out then. Mm -hmm. And um, spread it off then. And just pop it in the oven 425 degrees for about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Or until they're, they look like they're done. Um, these seeds are, some squash seeds are bigger than others. So like some of the acorn squash seeds um, were a little smaller than these seeds here. But these are nice and plump. They're not huge, but they're plump. So I think these will make nice seeds. They, they're filled with omega-3 mm. um, oh, fatty nice. acids, mm. which is really good for um, inflammation and joint health. Do they taste like roasted pumpkin seeds? They do to me. Mm. <laughs> they, they, taste, they all taste the same, all of them. And I think really just becomes a thing for flavoring. Mm. So it's a tricky part. Either having a really good vegetable, vegetable peeler 
but this, this is one of the squashes where you don't necessarily want to eat the skin. So like acorn squash and a lot of other, other squashes, you can eat the skin. This one is a little uh, firm. So you might not enjoy like, trying to chew on this for a little bit. So there are different ways to do this. I'm going to keep my um, flat surface down and peel through the leaf here. Change knives here. I might change to a completely different knife. And for this, because it is slippery, I'm just going to peel away from me. I'm trying to leave as much skin on as possible. And these are not being very good today. Here we go. It's a funny shaped object to deal with because of all the curves. I'm been trying to take the skins off. So a little issue with this one. Give me one moment. Give me my small knife. Yeah, I do. All right. Let me get that. Let me get the peeler out. You can. Not right. So for um, everyone who is tuning in tomorrow, I will be on the Black Vegetarian Society page. Um, at 11 a.m., where I will be making sweet potato pie. This is okay. That's there. I'm going to use this peeler. I'm trying to make this even not so difficult to work with. <laughs> This is like one of my actually favorite ones to work with, but I like, sometimes you can, I didn't think about this. I don't like to use a microwave, um, but you can microwave this for like 30 seconds or so, and it'll make it a little easier to peel the skin off mm. um, sometimes. But yeah, if you're on the me, I prefer not to do that. I've heard that the flavor is a lot like uh, pumpkin. It is, so it's um, actually a lot of the pumpkin, Pumpkin pie filling that you purchase in the stores is really nothing but butternut squash. So um, a lot of people have eaten butternut squash and didn't even know it all these years. I'll take the rest of these skins off. So this is going to be, actually I'm going to let this be for our butternut squash soup. So while I'm mm -hmm. finishing this one, I'm going to go in and get started. Turn my pan on. Add some um, oil. I'm going to use the avocado oil right now. And so avocado gonna, oil is a higher temperature oil. It right? is high heat really, really well. And I'm using um, the plant based butter. So I'm going to use two tablespoons of this is the um, country crack, but really any of the stick ones will do. One, two tablespoons here. So that Everybody's trying to come out with vegan butters now. It seems yeah, like. yeah, and it's the same price, which I appreciate. I'm mm. not trying to jack the price. Oh up. yeah, I think it, it's actually less expensive than um, butter. It now. is less expensive than butter. Um, it's the same price as their other, like um, I can't believe it, it's mm. not butter and country country crop. They're keeping all the prices the same, mm. which a lot of times they try to jack prices up on stuff that says plant based. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate them doing it because yeah. <laughs> like, like the ingredients are not. Gonna talk about like yeah. So I'm just letting my butter melt in here. I had a green tax. Right. Which is not cool. Right. So I have this one, the interesting shredded setting, but it's still on this job. Give us what we need. 
So you can use these skins for your bra. They'll make a nice color for your veggie bra. Um, so, yes, I was saying tomorrow I will be on um, the Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland's page, and they'll be filming to um, Jane and Jane News. Um, yeah, so 11 o'clock was Naja. I'm going to go in and dice this up now. This is, was, was a really large butternut squash. Mm. I see I'm putting some, I, this is a firm one. So, <laughs> butternut squash, I don't know if this one's been left to cure. When you harvest it, you actually should let it cure for two to three months. So I don't know if this has cured at all. This might really be very fresh, um, which is cool. When you let it cure, it actually gets sweeter mm -hmm. and easier to work with. So I feel like this is really fresh uh, butternut squash. When you buy them from the grocery store, they, they were harvested two, three months ago. Mm -hmm. Where do they typically uh, grow? Um, throughout this region. Mm -hmm. um, they can grow really anywhere and they keep really well. They're great winter squash. Mm. Um, if you decompost the seeds, make sure they compost well mm. because uh, sometimes people get surprised uh, yeah. <laughs> with the squash and butternut squash that they didn't plant, that they weren't planning on because these seeds are, they will last. So um, to make sure the heat of your compost gets really hot. So if you don't mind some volunteer butternut squash popping up. So our butter is melted. We're going to go in and add in our diced onion. So this is one medium diced yellow onion. One stalk of celery. And spice up. And one medium carrot dice. We're going to let all of that cook for a few minutes. So we have about a minute or so while uh, continuing with our butternut squash here. So, yeah, this is a nice size. I'm really probably going to need to use that top part. Um, this is about the equivalent of a medium um, size mm. butternut squash. I'm going to go in and just finish this one up. So, so far, if you join. Running in um, a little late today, we are making um, butternut squash soup, roasted butternut squash, and roasted cauliflower. Uh, butternut squash soup so far, we've put in two tablespoons of vegan butter, a little uh, avocado oil, and one celery stalk diced, one medium carrot diced, and um, one medium uh, diced up. So this was in our pot right now, and I am working on our butternut squash. So I'm going to kill this one. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. And the vitamins um, for our butternut squash is very similar to our sweet potatoes, actually. So it's high in beta carotene, where it gets this nice orange color, and the bit of carotene is what turns into vitamin A in our bodies. I have a question for everybody. Um, did, did anybody um, have any really good um, plant-based uh, dishes for Thanksgiving yesterday? I actually shared uh, my plate on um, the Holistic Wellness and Health page, so we had um, a nice uh, loaf that was made from wheat gluten. We also made um, sweet potato casserole with candied walnuts. Um, we have oh, green sauteed kale. And we had something else. What is it? All I can remember. Oh, yes. Oh. Vegan mac and cheese. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. That was delicious. So, um, nice filling meal. Um, we actually did have cornbread, but we didn't eat it. Mm. We got full of everything else. <laughs> um, oh, and vegan eggnog. And vegan eggnog, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that was all 
Share with us what you all made. Or if you bought from some place and supported a small business, that's cool too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of businesses doing um, vegan meals. Mm. Um, this is um, getting nice and soft here. So this is going to be a blended soup. Make sure we get our wash in here right now. And I'm going to uh, go on and put in my apple. So this um, two small apples, the recipe calls for one um, apple, but we put a little on the smaller side, so we add two diced um, gala apples. And we're going to add in four cups of water. You can use four cups of veggie broth. I'm going to use water and veggie base. So the broth base, which I love this stuff. Um, become extremely popular. And well, you made a really nice gravy yesterday, too. Yeah, the gravy was so good. So, yes, homemade <laughs> gravy. So, so, this is our broth uh, mix in here. We're going to let that cook for about 20 minutes or so. And we're going to um, work on our roasted veggies. Nice. Javon Sanders says she made a um, Fruit and veggie salad for the family, and they loved it. Nice. Uh, you can't go wrong with um, fruit. <laughs> fruit and veggies. Someone's like trying to watch sugar or something, but we all need fruit. The enzymes in fruit are so healing and cleansing. So that's awesome. That's interesting. Put this in here. So let's do our cauliflower. Next, I need a break from the next squash. So this is our mm. a cauliflower with the green still on it. These are edible. Mm, yeah. and it's in the brassica family, so you can treat these greens like you would uh, collard greens. Mm. You just spice it up and saute it if you want, or you put it in your soup. I'm just going to um, put that over there. So this is a whole head of cauliflower. I'm going to go straight down the center here. And this is our stem. Um, you can roast this as well. This um, mm. kind of like broccoli stems. So it's not going to be super firm. It's not, because I'm not sauteing it, it'll have time to pick first. I'm just going to take this part of the base off here. Discard that. Same thing with this side. But the rest of the stem can stay on here. And we're going to basically make these into florets. Space it down. And we're just roasting these, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Thank you. So we can make them into nice florets. But we're going to really use all of that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use this uh, stem here as well. Mm -hmm. We're just going to put this in the oven. So I already have the oven on at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. You can kind of see that little tree. So if you want perfect um, florets, you can really just break it off with your hands. And that'll be more like what you'll see in um, restaurants, stuff like that. But I want these, I don't want them this big, so I'm going to slice them in half. So because I don't care um, about the way they look, <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to cut through. We're just going to eat it. Um, but if I was going to do a like, special presentation for something, then yeah. Did you say we're roasting this or we are we? Oh, okay. So we already have some in the oven that I need to take out soon, and this will go in um, the oven. So this cauliflower, this was in our produce box um, as well. So I know sometimes you get things that people aren't familiar with. 
Um, I did do a recipe. We did um, powder flour and white potato. We did a mash, like mashed potatoes. And um, that, that recipe and it is on the website. You can also look at the video for it. It's on YouTube and Facebook. And I think it was last week. I think it was just last week, though. So just look for um, the title flower video. It's this name. Um, and you can see how easy it was to actually make this into a nice mashed potato dish. Um, it's lower calorie, great flavor, all that good stuff. Let's get our pan. This right on here. If you want to, you can put this in a bowl first and then put all the ingredients, mix it together so it's nice and even. But really, um, just save yourself the trouble of having another dish to wash. Mm. Put it on your tray. And then we're going to put the oil and everything right on in here. Does anyone have any questions? Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, Holistic Wellness and Health is doing, we're doing our first Black Friday sale. And if you put in coupon code 50BVSMD, so um, Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland, you'll get 50% off the Holistic Wellness Reset Program. And 10% of the profits will go to the Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland's mission of having and creating a sustainable lifestyle for all these. So um, you'll be supporting a nonprofit as well as um, getting great beneficial information. And I will push the button in a second for the link for you all to have all of that. Actually, all of the information is in the comments section. So you can find that information, Holistic Wellness Reset Program, 50% off. So now we are going to add our oil. We're using grapeseed oil and one fourth cup. Hmm. Why did you choose grapeseed oil? Just because I'm putting it in the oven at high heat. Hmm. Um, I used to use uh, uh, olive oil, hmm. um, but in, in the, in the brown nicely with the olive oil, but because of the high heat um, aspect, I'm just trying not to use olive oil for high heat. Hmm. So we can change the chemical properties and they're showing I'm researching that it's not a good mm. uh, okay. thing. So, mm. I, mean, I know for years they told us olive oil for everything. Right, right. So, new research is always coming out, and um, it's just good to like know what's what. Yeah. Mm. So, um, we have our spices here, and we have um, one teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of thyme, one teaspoon of coarse sea salt, and one fourth teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. So I'm just going to sprinkle this um, on. Mm -hmm. Put in the And just you can use your hands or um, something else if you want to, but just make sure it gets nice and coated here with all of the seasoning and our oil. If you feel like you need to add more oil, you can do that. And just throw some love in here while you're at it. And just get all those flavors mixed. So if you've had roasted cauliflower, definitely let me know. You know what, let me know what flavors you've used. Um, we're using thyme today. And so we use the two teaspoons of the um, dried thyme leaves. If you have fresh, you can do that. You also use rosemary um, or do an Italian seasoning. Mm. Um, then for this, and that'll all be the vegetables. And you can put nutritional yeast on here. I'm not using nutritional yeast. Let's get this in the oven and take the other one out. You can see nice and close to it. It's turned brown. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put it up here. Mm -hmm. 
this one in the oven. So I'm going to set it 425 degrees. And it was in there for about 30 minutes. So 25, 30 minutes is good. So we're going to let that cool off. And I'm going to do the other part of this wash. Just give me one moment. I'm going to put my scraps in a container. And while I'm doing that, you can look at our beautiful stock cooking for our buttercup squash. Next, we are going to make our roasted butternut squash, which is absolutely delicious. If you like um, sweet potatoes, like roasted sweet potatoes, I'm sure you would love this as well. So this, this one is a little smaller, so I won't have as much trouble. So once again, flat base. But I'm going, sometimes they're not flat. I'm going to take the bottom off and cut right down here. And yeah, let's just cut through the center here. And we have seeds again, put them in here. We have kids. Um, they would love to do this part, just let them um, rinse all of the flesh off of the seeds and season them however they want. So if they want super spicy and hot, they can put cayenne pepper on it. If they want it sweet, mm -hmm. you can put the cinnamon and sugar. Oh, you can make the syrup too. That's good. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like candied at mm -hmm. that point. It's like dessert. It's cool. And you're getting protein from the seeds. So it's a healthy snack. Uh, depending on how much sugar you add, but it's a healthy snack. All right. All right. Skin, skin. When you cut through this, you can actually feel like your pants get a little slick, so you really do want to be careful when I'm um, dealing with butternut squash. Not to scare you away from it, just be careful. But really, any produce um, can get a little slippery. Oh, this one is really much oh, easier to work with. Interesting. <laughs> All right, so the other one might just not have been aged. Um, well, which is cool. I like fresh stuff, though. So. But for butternut squash and even sweet potatoes, when you get sweet potatoes in the store, they usually harvested it two, three months ago. Mm. Um, you definitely want to let it cure, is what they call it, um, in a dark space if you can. I mean, if you eat it right away, that's okay. Yes? What do you think those two? That's a good question. I really don't know, other than um, you just let it sit for a few months. And I guess if you cut through, you know how you see that white starchiness um, when you cut a potato? That's the only thing I could think of, um, because that's when it's sweeter. It's sweeter when you let it sit. Um, it's, it's not like you can't eat it. You can eat it um, right away, like right after harvesting, but it's best to just let it. It's worth letting it sit mm. for a couple of months. Um, if you can, I mean, if, you, if you got them and you're ready to eat them right away, eat them. So I guess that's one of the benefits of buying local or directly from the farmer because they can tell you, hey, I just plucked them from the ground. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They can say, like, um, there was another farm a few years ago I went to buy. I knew they had a lot of sweet potatoes. And I went to buy some. They're like, oh, they're not ready yet. I'm like, you're not ready. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think they're ready for them. But um, they were letting them. Mm. And they didn't want to sell them to me, um, not curious, so, you know, respect to that, so, yeah. 
But that's a good question. Just going to investigate. Like, how how do you know when it's ready? Because it might be ready after four weeks. You might not have to wait. Eight weeks. Hmm. Um, so this is All right. Um, potatoes, one of those plants, you can just like take a little piece of it and and put it in the ground and it will grow on you? It can if you let it get the eyes on it. Um, mm -hmm. What a lot of people will do is let it um, get become slips is what it's called, where they actually start getting a little longer. And you can actually cut, wherever you see those, you can cut the one potato can make like six, seven or more plants. Mm -hmm. Just cut at the right spots and, and um, Sometimes you put it in water first. It depends on what it's looking like. If it has really good eyes, you can just put it in the soil. Mm. Just plant them. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But some people like to get even more eyes out of one, mm. one plant, one mm. um, bud, I should say, or one um, tuber. Mm. And they will like, then slice that sucker up and get a lot of um, slips. So I'm just doing cubes here for this. This is what we'll be roasting. So about the same size as we can just make roasting pretty even. And our uh, soup is looking good. I'm going to add the rest of the seasonings to that in a moment. So for the butternut squash, same thing for roasting. If you want it sweet, you can add um, salt or maple syrup to it. If you want um, savory, you can add different savory spices to it and if you want just um, plain so you can get an idea of the flavor, salt and pepper. Um, and if you're on low sodium or low sodium, you can actually skip the salt. Put a little um, pepper and oil on there and go for it. If you're doing oil free as well, you can do this. Mm -hmm. um, use parchment paper and coat it with a little apple cider vinegar mm. and pop it in. And just watch it a little more and make sure it's not burning. But it'll work. Mm. All right, so that is that. So our soup is almost done. So we'll go on and get our butternut squash. I'm actually going to put it in a bowl. Not. And get another um, tray out. Does anyone have any questions? I'm not seeing any as of yet. So we're going to use the immersion blender on this. So this is um, blending, cooking very nicely. Let me just check. Yep, everything's nice and tender. So because of that, I'm going to go on and add my other spices in for our butternut squash soup. So we have a teaspoon of our coarse salt teaspoon of black pepper, half teaspoon of nutmeg, tablespoon of, I'm sorry, teaspoon of cinnamon, and one fourth teaspoon of red pepper flakes. So we're gonna put all of this in here. And smelling super good already. Let that cook just a little bit. And then we're gonna blend that. So I'm actually gonna turn the heat off and just let the um, let it cook within that heat right there. We're gonna put our butternut squash on our tray here, our baking pan, our roll pan. And we're keeping this super basic. I'm using grapeseed oil for this. The fourth cup of, cup of grapeseed oil. I just did the um, bottom foot. You can do all of it. I'm just not going to do that right now. I'm going to fill the rest of it. And this is just salt and pepper. So um, teaspoon of coarse sea salt, teaspoon of black pepper. Use fresh black pepper if you can. And once again, just mix it all together. And we're going to put it in the oven at 425. And that is for about 25 minutes, and it'll be done. And then while this is cooking, we'll get this blended up. And I'm going to check on our cauliflower that's in the oven as well. Like this. That's it. So I'm going to put this in. Okay. 
assemble them very nicely. And once again, for those who came in late, this is our roasted cauliflower. Just going to move my hands off. The roasted cauliflower um, is seasoned with salt, pepper, thyme, and red pepper flakes, as well as garlic powder. So, you can open. Let's see how it is. Sometimes cooking is messy, and it's all good. So, wow, this smells really good. I can just smell all of the seasonings there. So I'm gonna use the immersion blender, which is also known as a stick blender. And I'm gonna start on low, and that's high, so low. And you could do this as a chunk of soup. Um, hmm if you want to, or kind of a mix so you don't have to blend it super smooth. Mm. If you're using a regular blender, which you can do as well, it'll um, blend super smooth. You can also use a food processor if you don't have a blender. Just want to send, um, back because this is super hot and I don't want to have it splash out. So you see this area that has a little vent here, just keeping that um, slightly submerged because if I lift it up, I'll have hot liquids. Um, going all over the place, which we don't want. Yes. So I hope I, I'm getting your name right, Tavon. Uh, Tavon Sanders asks, can you show us how to make vegan mac and cheese one day? Ooh, so I only do that for classes, like actual hands-on cooking classes, or um, you can do a virtual cooking class for that. That's more involved, but I can do that. Um, probably would be ideal to do it before Christmas. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see if I can do it before um before then um to get a pass going. But yeah, that's definitely a possibility. And if you're doing a class then you want to know if um people have any allergies ahead of time for that class. Yeah, whenever I do that I give options or um I, I usually use cashews, but you can use uh some flower seeds as well so there are different options some people actually make their mac and cheese with butternut squash wow. so that's an option um it gives a nice, <laughs> it gives a nice <laughs> reactions I, I think would love it though. um it's uh it gives a nice flavor to it and nice texture and the right color so um, i think that's a great option to add to give that like uh Double cheese color, um, adding the butternut squash, but there are other things you can do too. There's so many different versions out there, but I've been making it for like 10 years now, so I've like pretty much perfected. Before I became vegan, I made like some of the best vegan mac and cheese, uh, non vegan mac and cheese, so it was important that I knew how to do it and do it right. So I actually make my own cheese sauce for it. But yeah, we can, we can do that. We'll try to get it on the books in the next two weeks, like just before Christmas. Mm. But if there's any other um, things you all would like to see for the demos, just uh, let me know, or cooking class as well, just let me know um, what you all would like. We can either veganize or what plants you might have received in the CSA, sharing, mm. like I don't know what to do with this, Chris will tell me what to do. Um, with this karabi <laughs> or whatever, yeah, I can do that. So, can you see? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, it's chunky right now. I'm just um, blending through. Definitely, if I use the blender, it would be faster. If you're using a blender, you see like all the steam coming out, so it's super hot. So you want to do it in batches, a small amount at the time. You don't want to fill up your blender um, because of all of the steam, it can actually cause an accident. Mm -hmm. wow. So you want to make sure that you're just doing it in batches and you leave a vent. So what I'll usually do is leave like either um, a small part at the top off or leave it like tilted and put like a tea towel or cloth over it so that it's just nothing splattering out. 
and um, just blend that way. So that's one way to do it, or you can do it with an immersion blender. If you don't have either one, you can take mm. um, a potato masher mm. <laughs> or even a fork and just mash it up um, until you get the consistency you want. You can also use the um, hand mixer, like the beater that people use. Mm, wow. Um, you can use that as well. But you want to make sure, like this is shallow, you want to have a deeper um, pot for that so that you're not having stuff splatter all over the place, especially something this hot. This is a very hot soup. I mean, you can still see the steam coming off of this. I guess a food processor would work. It would. With that, that too. Yeah, food processor works. So we are done. Um, I'm going to let everything keep roasting, but I'm going to actually get this tray. So we have our roasted cauliflower here. And our um, roasted butternut squash should be done soon, but we're not going to um, work for that. I had not budget and time to get all of that together. So that'll be done soon, though, and I can take a picture to show you all, all the finished product for that. And our soup is done. I might blend it a little more. I actually like a little chunkiness to my mm. soup. It makes me um, have, it feels more filling, and I think my family feels the same. But it's, it's your soup, so whenever you make it, you can make like fix it how you want. These are just like the flavors that you can put together to make a nice butternut squash soup. Question? Oh no. Uh, maybe we can just take a look at the um yeah. see what it looks like real quick. Oh wow, well, actually it's almost done. Let's pull this out. So fizzling real nice there. And actually our cauliflower is done. Mm. That's ready to come on out. Um, I didn't mention the cauliflower. If you um, notice on your head of cauliflower some like dark spots starting to come on there, you can just scrape that off. Um, it's just this coloration. Usually, if it hasn't been kept cold enough, but it's nothing wrong. With it. You don't want to throw the whole head of cauliflower out just for some little black spots. Spec. So just cut that off and use the cauliflower, and you're good to go. So um, that just helps minimize food waste, and there's really nothing wrong with it. So just cut it off and make it delicious food. So um, once again, we got a lot of this produce from our friends at the Plantation Park Heights Urban Garden in West Baltimore. Thank you all. And um, I will be back there Thursday, next Thursday, doing a um, live cooking demo, weather permitting outside at their location. And we'll be live on Instagram at 3 p.m. Eastern time. You can get yourself a free produce box from 12 p.m the 5 p.m. or until they're gone on Thursdays. So um, the address, you, it's escaping me right now, but you can um, check that out. I think it's 3811 Park Heights Avenue. But um, just clarify, if I check that out, look at their page. If you haven't liked their Facebook page, it's a great page. So make sure you do that. Um, also make sure you're following us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, actually, go back to this. I'm going to go on and show you all. Let me put the link up so I'll show them the um, produce, and I'm going to go to the computer and put the um, banner up for everyone. So you'll see there it says the holiday mm -hmm. sale for the um, reset is there, and I'm going to show the coupon code. So, so um, the Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland. Um, like I said, we'll get 10% of the profits, and you get 50% off of the program, which is a holistic plant-based program with visual visualizations um, every day. Every morning, you'll receive that, um, and you can do it in the morning or evening just to get your mind um, mindset correct or doing any type of reset. So it's not just about food. It's about mind, body, and soul, and the um, go over a lot of different aspects of plant-based foods, healing foods, as well as working on a mindset for um, just better overall wellness and health. So make sure you check that out. The link is in the comments section. If you have any questions, feel free to ask as well. So um, I'm going to go on and sign out. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Peace, love, and blessings.